Underground Bunker is your proprietor on a Friday afternoon. Um, talking to you at YouTube, but please sign up for free emails at tonyortega.substack.com. Today we had a big story we wanted to tell you about. Valerie Haney, what Scientology is putting her through is just outrageous. Back in December, we had this very long story at the Daily Beast talking about the ordeal she's gone through since her lawsuit, her 2019 lawsuit, was forced into Scientology religious arbitration. <clears throat> now, we all knew going in that that was a joke. The only time before this in the 70-year history of the Church of Scientology that a court had sent an ex-Scientologist into Scientology's arbitration <clears throat> were the Garcias back in 2017. They fought it. They didn't want to do it. But they finally realized that the only way they could appeal the judge's decision was to go through the arbitration. I hope that some of you have asked me that. Why did they even go through it? Because they can't appeal it. They can't appeal the court's decision until they go through the arbitration. <clears throat> so the Garcias did it back in 2017. It lasted one day. For one day, they had this panel of Scientologists in good standing, listening to the Garcia's evidence, dismissing most of what they brought in, and then it was a joke. So now, uh, seven years later, six years later, back in uh, October 2023, Valerie Haney finally has to go through the same thing as well. And I was very fortunate at that time. They had told her they were going to have it in this out-of-the-way warehouse in the city of Commerce where they have this huge distribution warehouse. It's where they print up all their flyers and videos. I mean, all the all this stuff they mail out to the whole world. They, they It's in this big warehouse that if you didn't know it was there, you'd never see it. It's, it's in an industrial neighborhood. Why would they want this there? Well, because they didn't want any attention drawn to it, right? But I was fortunate right across the freeway, there's this commerce casino with Las Vegas-style gambling. I've always known about it driven by it a hundred times. But I got a hotel room there, and at the end of each of the three days of arbitration that she went through, Valerie, her attorneys, who weren't allowed in the arbitration with her, but they were waiting for her outside, and uh, this uh, pair of uh, court reporting uh, videographer and a stenographer, all came over to my hotel room and set things up and then took these sworn statements for Valerie. It was a really unique experience for me as a journalist, a lot of fun. So I got to see her describe in detail for her attorneys what happened each of those three days. And it was outrageous because remember that the court had ordered her, okay, you signed a contract, you have to go take your grievances to them. Well, her grievances are that she was held against her will at the, at the uh, gold base, that once she escaped, they were stalking her, smearing her, libeling her online. None of that came up in those three days. Instead, they made her sit there as they brought out witnesses and documents of her experience in the Sea Org, her contracts from when she was 15 years old, to just ridicule her. It was just insane. It was so, so ridiculous. And after those three days, I wrote, uh, it took a little while, but I, I got a piece in the Daily Beast about that uh, in December. And then Scientology said they wanted to keep going with Valerie for two more days in January. Well, she had something going on in January. She asked me to have it moved back. It was moved to February. They happened to pick a couple of days. I was out of town, so I couldn't do the hotel thing this time. But I, you know, I figured I'd call Valerie each night to see how it was going. But after that first day, February 20th, I didn't hear from her. And I assumed maybe her attorneys had changed their minds. They didn't want press or whatever. But that wasn't the case. It was several weeks later, just recently, she finally reached out to me. And her first words were, uh, they did it again. I, they brainwashed me again. I had to throw off the brainwashing. Scientology was really upset about the Daily Beast piece. They didn't like that we, uh, Valerie referred to them as her abusers, that we named them in the, in the, in the piece. Uh, and they told her, they said, listen, if you keep talking to that guy, if you keep doing stories, we're going to, we're going to press charges on you. Like they're going to like, sue her or throw her in jail i don't know so she was she was frightened about that and didn't didn't call me and i i waited i you know i i knew it was something like that so she finally reached out and said you know what they're just brainwashing me again forget it i want the people to know what's going on so i really hand it to valerie haney she's so brave they're putting her through this garbage another two days in february we described it in the story some of the details are pretty amazing i mean 
you know, we always assume that when you're working in the Sea Org or working for Scientology, everything you do is logged and monitored. You're, if you dare to go online, every search is logged. If you send an email to somebody, that's saved by Scientology. If you make a phone call, that's logged and monitored. So that now when she's got these claims about how she was mistreated, they just bring out boxes of the stuff. Uh, binders, I'm sorry. I said boxes, binders, whatever. Uh, thousands of emails, photos, videos, every computer search she ever made when she worked for Scientology. Logged, recorded, monitored. And you know, she said to me, "Look, they're just proving my point that I was a prisoner, that it was I, it was slavery." And you know, she, I think she's got a point there. So uh, you know, she said that she's called them their her abusers. She, she thinks it's ridiculous that the court is making her cr go back crawling to her abusers. She doesn't even want to be in the room with these people. Some of the, some of the people on the panel were part of her abuse. She, we talked about that in the Daily Beast piece, that some of the women on the panel were involved in keeping her from getting any freedom when she was in Scientology. So it's just incredible that a U.S. court would sentence somebody to this kind of treatment, and she has to go through it to get to back into court and possibly appeal things. So uh, please go take a look at the piece. It's got amazing details about what she went through and the things that were said to her in there. And uh, I'm very fortunate. She took detailed notes as it was going on. That's another thing. She not only could not have, she not only couldn't have her attorneys with her. She couldn't have her cell phone. They weren't taking a record. She couldn't have a, a transcript. The only thing they'd allow her to do is, is keep handwritten notes. And I have to say, for somebody trying to keep temp contemporary note, contemporaneous notes under that pressure, in that kind of an awful situation. Her handwriting was very clear. I got to hand it to Valerie. She does. She's got great handwriting, so I was able to read the notes pretty clearly, and I was able to put that piece together today. You're going to want to see it if you haven't already. Please, TonyOrtega.substack.com. Sign up for free emails. You'll get the day's story every morning at 7 a.m. We've had quite a week, uh, but the day before we got this incredible story from a family that's been ripped apart and drained of their money through the trophies, the big whales program. So uh, it's been a big week. Please come on by and uh, check things out. All right, signing up from deep underground somewhere in the underground bunker.